it was very hard to. Those were not two separate issues. To add to the growing tension, provincial elections have brought new players into the game. Frank McKenna of New Brunswick wants to rewrite the deal. Clyde Wells gets the Newfoundland legislature to revoke its approval of the accord. We've got to make some significant changes in Meech Lake, and I will do whatever is necessary to make sure that those changes are made, or Meech Lake as it is now does not go into effect. By now, some of the deal's keenest supporters are disheartened. Lucien Bouchard, Mulroney's Quebec lieutenant, is fed up with his own party's attempts to dilute the deal. Et je me vois contraint de quitter le gouvernement avec douleur, avec déchirement, aussi bien que les concurs conservateurs pour siéger comme député indépendant. <laughs> At the conference in Montreal, the students reach the same impasse as the politicians. On ne perd rien de essayer. On... Ça fait depuis que la Confédération est ensemble que ça ne marche pas toujours. Là, pourquoi qu'on n'essayerait pas de s'essayer à bon, de séparer et voir, voir qu ce, que ça... Qu ce que ça va avoir l'air? The apparent inevitability of separation really bothers me. It's almost like people are giving up. We fought with each other since the beginning of, since the beginning of our relationship together as French and English Canadian citizens. June 1990, the final deadline looms. We are distinct. We are distinct. After months of friction and acrimony, the end comes quietly from a soft-spoken politician holding an eagle feather. Is the will of the house to sit beyond 12.30? No, no, there is no leave. In the Manitoba legislature, Elijah Harper uses procedural loopholes to stall the debate on Meech. We are fighting for our rightful place in Canadian society and also fighting for democracy. The clock runs out. The Meech Lake Accord is dead. In Quebec, a solemn Robert Bourassa makes his position clear. Le Québec est aujourd'hui et pour toujours une société distincte, libre et capable d'assumer son destin et son développement. Merci. The national debate over Meech Lake has sharpened Karen Klein's appetite for learning about her country. She will go on to study Canadian politics and history in university. The country's political drama has also affected Martin Labonté. From Vancouver, he watches the Saint-Jean-Baptiste parade in Montreal just after Meech Lake dies. It was a double emotion of disappointment and of national pride. I watched it on television, and I was proud to see everyone marching in the streets, standing up for themselves. Support for sovereignty swells. Martin Labonté was just 10 years old the first time his province held a referendum. But there will soon be another, and Martin Labonté will vote for sovereignty. Valley City Furniture in Dundas, Ontario, Bob Crockford sees the future. We drew a circle around Dundas, which was about 500 miles, to see how far you could drive in a day or where you could fly in about an hour, an hour and a half. Bob Crockford discovers 106 million people live in cities within the circle. 
This was a real eye-opener because we were used to flying to Edmonton to get a high school job or flying to Calgary or out to Moose Jaw and Gimli, Manitoba and all manner of other places. And suddenly we realize that it was closer to Dallas than it was to Regina. By 1988, most of Bob Crockford's furniture is sold to the United States. His family business and its longtime employees depend on this new market. For more than a century, Canadians have struggled with a fundamental question. Should Canada seek closer ties to the United States or forge its own economic destiny? Prime Minister Brian Mulroney favors a close relationship. The free trade agreement is going to secure two million jobs in Canada and is going to create 250,000 new ones. The free trade agreement is the positive option that will give Canadians the opportunity to stand tall and compete with the very best in the world. Canada and the U.S. carve out a detailed agreement that will see trade barriers gradually shrink. At Toronto's Inglis factory, workers worry about what the free trade agreement means for them. The average age at the plant is 47. The average seniority, 17 years. Union President Mike Hirsch values the life and culture that extend beyond the shop floor. Like a family, we love and hate, you know. But we spend more time with each other than we do with our own families. Now the Inglis plant has been bought by an American company, Whirlpool. Mike Hirsch has heard that jobs will soon go south. Newspapers were saying there would be jobs elsewhere. But people working 20 years in a factory with grade nine education didn't think they were gonna get those jobs. The free trade agreement becomes the single most divisive issue of the heated 1988 election campaign. Liberal leader John Turner vows that if he's elected, he'll rip up the deal. We built a country, east and west and north, we built it on an infrastructure that deliberately resisted the continental pressure of the United States. For 120 years we've done it. With one signature of a pen, you've reversed that thrown us into the north-south influence of the United States With a and will reduce us, will reduce us, I'm sure, to a colony of the United States because when the economic levers go, the political independence is sure to fall. Mr. Turner, with a document that's cancelable on six months' notice, be serious. The question of Canada's independence becomes the crucial focus of the debate. In Montreal, political cartoonist Terry Mosher, known as Aislin, sees the fight as a romantic struggle to save the soul of Canada from big business. We tapped into something where people were very nervous about Mulroney and didn't trust him. And certainly the cartoons helped that, that fear. Artists, intellectuals, social groups, and unions send their message to two million homes. On the pro-free trade side, the Business Council on National Issues delivers its pitch in newspapers across the country. Eight of 10 premiers endorse the deal, including the leaders of Quebec and Alberta. At Valley City, Bob Crockford urges his employees to consider voting conservative. A 15% duty applied to our products would have a very serious detrimental effect on employment. That's right. Have you ever, ever voted Tory before? Never did. But you're thinking about it this time? Yeah, I'm thinking. Crockford believes Canada must embrace free trade or be left behind. You want an example of countries that don't trade with the world? Take a look at North Korea and Albania. You like that? Terrific. 
You happen to like better cars, better food, better hospitals, and all the rest of it, then free trade is the direction. That I'm saying to Canadians, wake up. It's not too late. Join our crusade. We have to defeat this deal. After they've torn up the free trade agreement, ask them what they're going to do for you and for your jobs. For many Canadians, it's frustratingly difficult to sort out the competing claims. People are confused. They have been trying to market free trade in Canada. They, they have not been trying to cover the issues. At the end of the intense campaign, the Conservatives win the day with help from strong majorities in Alberta and Quebec. Opponents point out that more Canadians voted for the two opposition parties, but Brian Mulroney now has his second majority government. Free trade will become law. As more and more tariff barriers fall, Bob Crockford's family business prospers. His company will win contracts to build furniture for American courthouses. But for workers at Inglis, a way of life is definitively over. The year the free trade deal comes into force is the year the Inglis plant shuts down forever. My whole life was about Inglis and the appliance industry. I mean, that's all. That's everything I knew. And it's gone. For older workers with little education, prospects are bleak. Schooling, I don't think, will be any good to me. I don't think uh, you have to be trained to serve hamburgers, and I think that's about the only job I could get right now. The free trade deal was just the final blow for this plant. The world is changing as technology alters the landscape, as globalization shapes the new economy, as the industrial age gives way to the information age. Later, Mike Hirsch has a new job, retraining laid-off workers. When Inglis closed, the union tried to retrain as many people as it could. I ran into one guy who took computer training. He looked great. He said he was teaching computers, had a good job. And I was really glad for him. Others never work again. There were winners and losers. Most of them did okay, not with secure jobs or high-paying jobs, but they're employed, and that's something. For some Canadians, a foothold in a new world. Lives affected by the grand sweep of events. It is hard to see history close up. It is distance that reveals meaning. Our story of Canada and its people ends here, as the 1990s begin, as the country approaches the dawn of a new century. As the 1980s drew to a close, Canadians watched the Berlin Wall collapse. They saw new democracies rise. They witnessed an ancient nation tilt between protest and power. As Canada heads into a new era, lives will be transformed and laws rewritten. This land will define itself again and again, as it has from the beginning.
future is not a place. It is not a fixed point on a navigation chart. It is instead an ever-shifting destination, constantly changed by the journey itself and by the people who make it. Fifteen thousand years ago, the first travelers came to this continent, which became the destination for countless generations. The place where a million epic journeys ended and a million new stories began. Before there was Rome, before Babylon, this land became home to more than 50 nations, peoples with their own languages, laws, and gods. There is a giant that lives in the north. When he blows his breath, violent snowstorms occur. Other spirits live to the east and west. The thunder is the noise of them running across the sky. Four hundred years ago, carried by billowing sails from France, came the next journey of the adventurers. The landless and the dreamers, who would unlock a continent and forge a new world people. Anyone who considers to what extent the Canadiens are alert, joyful, courageous, able to withstand any hardship, that person must also foresee that Canada will soon become an extremely powerful country. Canada became the battlefield of empires. It was pulled into a decade of revolution, which unleashed the largest human journey in the continent's history. I climbed to the top of Chipman's Hill and watched the sails disappear. Although I had not shed a tear throughout all the war, I sat down on the damp moss with my baby in my lap and cried. And they kept coming. The jobless from Scotland. The landless from Ireland. The dispossessed of Europe. And they have been followed ever since by families searching for opportunity and sanctuary. Every strand is still here. This history is still in play. The homelands of the First Peoples. The future of the French and the English. The newcomers who have shaped our century. The eternal dynamic with the United States. Language and culture. Legacy and land. Political power and identity. Confederation or secession our place in the emerging global constellations. Every story you have seen is still evolving. You are creating it now. There are young people watching now who will retell this story one day. Action. Informed by their needs, Action. their perspectives, and their time. You don't have to fix it. When they do, the voices and the images will be of men, women, and children who are among you now. Whether you know it or not, you are all living an epic drama.